Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. Is most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us here for Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. Same show times here as we've seen for the last couple of months. 530 APB KUAC 9.4, 360 North 730 Public Media 5 a.m. the following morning and loaded onto YouTube uh, probably by 7 p.m. And satellite imagery today shows the uh, front that yesterday was farther west and stronger with a lot more wind and a little more precipitation really falling apart, uh, kind of slipping off to the east down here. Big area of upper level high pressure here, holding that back uh, to the west. Easterly flow through the interior actually uh, pushed it back from what it was earlier this morning. And a break behind that, uh, not too bad, just clouds, a uh, couple of scattered showers, but nothing significant there for St. Paul down across the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. And then the next system out here uh, south of the Aleutians, gradually edging its way northward. That spread some moisture up into the Adak Atka area with some showers back towards Shimia. Over the interior, not a lot going on. Uh, light winds and uh, variably cloudy skies from the Arctic coast all the way down to the Gulf of Alaska. So I have this uh, upper level thing here just south of the Kenai Peninsula. Flow around that dragging moisture up. Uh, just some scattered rain and snow showers here occurring. Uh, mostly western Prince William Sound and the south side of the Kenai Peninsula in toward uh, Kachemak Bay. Otherwise Cook Inlet, uh, just a few clouds. Uh, more clouds over the Copper River Basin are actually from the Besna up across Northway just kind of see that uh, lighter gray area there. Again, some flurries falling off and on throughout much of the day. That same pattern extending down in toward Whitehorse there and right up to the mountains. Otherwise, the southeast coast uh, had some sunshine today over the northern areas. Higher clouds down to the south, but precipitation free. On the chart, uh, again, scattered rain and snow showers. Nothing occurred at Cordova, but Seward had some rain. Homer reported some snow. And in across western Prince William Sound, uh, lighter amounts than what fell yesterday, and then some scattered snow showers up over the mountainous terrain, but nothing really uh, significant. Nothing going on over the interior, as I mentioned. Uh, some patchy or fog there at Barrow with a few flurries, and I think it was dead horses down a half mile visibility and fog this afternoon. Otherwise, uh, those are the lowest conditions I could see. Well below zero on the north slope, that lighter shaded area there, uh, Umiat Airfield, 18 below at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Narrow band of very light snow here with that front as it continues to weaken. Stalled out in about this position and then uh, a little more in the way of rain occurring down across the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, mostly uh, as that came through, really not much, uh, just a third of an inch falling at Falls Pass and King Cove. Uh, Lighter amounts off to the east with uh, ADAC had about a tenth of an inch with uh, this system out here to the west that spread some rain into that area. Otherwise, St. Paul, six hundredths of an inch. And then with this, sewer did pick up a tenth of an inch of rain. And that's about it with that system. Moving on to tonight's forecast, uh, the storm down to the south there, definitely the precipitation will stay south of the area. Just uh, some clouds again over the southern panhandle, clearing skies as you head north, and the winds increase as well, north to northeast, uh, 25 to 30 knots, uh, higher gusts in the channeled areas, nothing 
really strong at all. There is higher pressure over the Yukon, but it's not all that strong, so it's not going to be blasting through there like it's, uh, it otherwise could, or it's been known to at times this time of the year. Snow showers again continue tonight, a chance of along the North Gulf Coast, uh, Prince William Sound, possibly Valdez may get a flurry, and that's going to come right up at times depending on how strong a surge of moisture comes around that but shouldn't really get past the Chugach range if it even makes it there. Otherwise, uh, clearing out Kodiak, no change over the interior tonight. Light winds, fair skies, patchy fog, eastern Arctic coast, winds light. Winds light here over the eastern Bering Sea, just a trough now, but still some light snow or flurries along this area. Nothing more than a quarter of an inch, if that. And then some rain and snow showers, a little milder conditions here over the Perblofs there. And then rain with this low center now tracking up northeast of Amchitka. It's a little bit of an increase in the winds out in that area, but not all that much. We've got another wave developing here, moving up and another system right on its heels. And we'll see uh, tomorrow. This one moves just south of the Alaska Peninsula there, just south of uh, Falls Pass with uh, chance of moisture on Alaska in across the Alaska Peninsula. Widely scattered snow shower southeast Bering Sea and a stronger system back out here uh, just north of Adak. So some good north to northwest winds uh, coming in on the western side of that thing. But the strongest winds will be down south of the area. Otherwise, we've got just uh, mostly cloudy skies, uh, areas of light snow or snow showers. Togiak Bay across the deltas there right up to the southern coast of the Seward Peninsula. So it'll be a mostly cloudy kind of snowy day. Uh, there, but nothing that will accumulate to very much again. And uh, high pressure in over the interior, mostly clear skies, uh, light winds, and dry conditions. And this uh, low kind of edging away now, so there's still a risk of some snow shower activity here along the North Gulf Coast tomorrow into mainly western Prince William Sound, Seward up to Whittier, uh, possibly getting into the Portage area. Otherwise, a kind of a partly to mostly day here for Cook Inlet and mostly cloudy for the Cop River Basin. Mostly clear, dry across the southeast coast with, uh, again, gusty northeast winds up over the northern areas. And otherwise, uh, this system down to the south uh, pretty much stays there, as we'll see for uh, Sunday. That just kicks in to the west there. So another, another nice day here for the southeast coast. Uh, Sunday, much like uh, tomorrow, except lighter winds now up over the northern areas. High pressure, only 1,015 millibars there over the Yukon. And with this low shifting inland, pressures will rise. So really lighter winds coming up for Sunday. Next uh, storm, actually the two centers merge. Uh, the western one catches up with the eastern one, and we've got a 977 millibar system there south of uh, Sandpoint or Chignik. Good front uh, pushes up, uh, possibly gale force winds for Kodiak Island with rain definitely there, especially on the east side into uh, Kodiak City. Mixture of rain or snow here uh, back across Shelikoff Strait, down the Alaska Peninsula, those northeast winds, which probably will be gale force in Shilikoff Strait on Sunday and wrapping back down more northerly there for the western Alaska range. North to south flow here pulling cold air again southward. So look for some snow showers for the eastern Aleutians uh, scattered by the time you get out toward Atka. High pressure, light winds for the western Aleutians into the Bering Sea. And uh, some of this moisture again left over from the uh, low, weak low we've had there. Again, just a mostly cloudy day, chance of some mixed precipitation. Now Cordova staying west of Yakutat in across uh, probably precipitate or will be dry. Nothing will fall in Valdez on Sunday and possibly even uh, Portage and then down the coast. No change over the interior again. Pretty nice weekend coming up unless you're looking for more snow. Variably cloudy, light winds. And I mentioned uh, the Panhandle looking good again. Arctic coast, variable clouds, patchy areas of flurries and fog. For the temperatures across the panhandle, lower to uh, mid 30s, 40 degrees down at uh, Heidelberg, while Klawak had 37, 31 in Juneau. Otherwise, Sitka 34, 29 over at Yakutat. Cordova pushed up to 40 degrees with Seward reaching 33 degrees. And again, picking about a tenth of an inch of precipitation. Lower to mid-20s, the Sitna, Madanuska Valley, Cook Inlet down to Kenai where it was 
26 degrees. Homer, a little snow today, 33. 34, Okiok and Kodiak, uh, single numbers here, just above zero across the Copper River Basin. Teens there with the cloud cover over the eastern Tanana Valley, 40 mile country. Fairbanks just two above. And on up to the north, there's a minus two at Bettles. Shokitsik, 14 below this afternoon. And Umiat Airfield, 18 below. But uh, teens near 20 out along the Arctic coast. Up the east side here, a shade below zero this afternoon. And back to the northwest, uh, 10 to 15. But uh, Selowick, minus one, 21 at Nome. Same thing at Wales, 28 Gamble and uh, lower to mid 20s here along the southwest coast with Kipnik up to 27, or that was Tuxuk Bay. Upper 30s for the Pribloss, 40s Western Alaska Peninsula, cooling off into the mid 30s out to the west. And for the lows tonight, uh, 10 to 20 below up here over the north central interior. And otherwise, we've got 20s along the southwest coast, uh, 30s, Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians, and the southeast coast here, upper teens to near 30 degrees with about that same range along the north Gulf Coast, mostly in the teens to near 20 for south central Alaska. And for the highs tomorrow, uh, near or a little below zero here again for the north slope, uh, maybe down to 15 below again, like at places like Umiat, but generally staying below zero across the Yukon Flat. Single numbers, Tanana Valley into the Copper River Basin again, warming into the uh, upper 20s near 30 along the coast, near 40 for the Pribloffs and Eastern Aleutians, 42 forecast high for Atka, 36 Kodiak, 30s to lower 40s for the Panhandle. Flying weather tomorrow, VFR for the southeast coast, and a good portion of interior Alaska. Could be some lower stuff in and around here for some marginal VFR, as well as back uh, from the Bering Strait into western Norton Sound. VFR, southwest coast, northern Bering Sea. Areas of marginal VFR uh, here possible across uh, the Aleutians and the south side of the Alaska Peninsula. And for Anatovic, VFR tomorrow with uh, Adigan seeing VFR conditions as well. Lake Clark and Merrill VFR. Rainy VFR. Uh, windy VFR. In fact, all the passes are VFR just like they were uh, today, except for Portage. And for tomorrow, VFR, Portage, IFR possible on the eastern entrance. That's probably where the lowest conditions will be, otherwise marginal. And for Chilkoot and White, VFR both tomorrow and Sunday. For the uh, freezing level at the surface, right along the coast up to St. Lawrence Island, but 2,000 feet here south of the Aleutians, up into the Gulf of Alaska, cutting across the southern panhandle. Icing, uh, possibly, maybe, some ice, uh, just a thread here of some white stuff, North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, also out here to the west, Yukon Delta, up toward Nome. Probably a little bit better chance here, although nothing significant, Perbilov's Eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, on out toward Hamchitka. Upper level wind flow chart, 18,000 feet. Still that weak upper level thing here over the uh, Kenai Peninsula. Stronger system out here to the west. Main jet to the south here, one weak branch northwest across the northern Bering Sea. Big upper high here over the interior. And this split again, that's what uh, just tore that front apart here as it approaches southwest coast. That's going to hold into tomorrow. And uh, otherwise, no flow here across the panhandle of the Yukon. And 9,000 feet. 20 to 30 knots here from the peninsula of the Bering Sea, and then stronger northerlies wrapping back in on the west side of that low center north of Adak. Uh, 5 to 15, maybe up to 20 over the Selawik Valley there for the north, and lighter winds for the Arctic coast. Lighter, more variable southern Alaska and into the panhandle. 3,000 feet, uh, kind of a north to northeast flow, but just 5 to 15 knots for the southeast coast. Light variable winds, southern Alaska, right up to the Arctic coast, become a little more easterly, 5 to 15, southeast, 20 to 25 in that stretch of the Bering Sea, and then 35, maybe up to 45 knots there over the western Aleutians. And as far as turbulence goes, looking really smooth, north to south here, uh, gradient across the uh, eastern Copper River Basin, Wrangell Mountains, uh, eastern, Alaska, eastern Alaska Range, could be a little bumpy through here, maybe some moderate chop there, northern southeast coast, uh, otherwise smooth all the way out here until you get toward that next system. Light isolated moderate chop, mostly from uh, Nikolsky, say out to Kiska Island, including Adak and Atka. And after 
uh, the break uh, into Alaska, I'll be back to look at the marine forecasts. We have a big solar flare coming in, so we're out here on an aurora hunt. It's a CME, it's a dynamite, a coronal mass ejection. It's when the sun, it kicks off energy in these explosions that are larger than the earth explosion type things coming off of sunspots. And if that energy is pointing straight at the earth, it gets caught up in our magnetic field and that energy, electrons, come down our magnetic field, collide with oxygen up there about 50 or a couple hundred miles high, and that's what generates the northern lights. My job as the photographer and the aurora hunter is to be in position, you know, location, location, location. And I like to think uh, I'm composing. Uh, Mother Nature, it's a bit of a teamwork thing, you know, she's got to put on the show, but I have to be in the right position and of course with the right tools and the know-how. Um, I've stopped keeping track of how much time I spend out here in terms of hours. It's more in terms of uh, weeks or months or at this point years now. You know, it was always in me, even when I was a kid growing up in the lower 48. I would spend nights sleeping on our trampoline, just staring at the stars. I'm in fourth grade and I'm going, wow, look at those stars. <laughs> and I'd see how many nights in a row I could sleep on the trampoline. And I think my record was 23 nights in a row. So I was doing kind of strange things for an Iowa country boy. I can remember specifically the very first time I saw the Northern Lights. It was 1989, the peak of the solar cycle, and I was going to graduate school in Laramie, Wyoming. And all of a sudden we had heard the Northern Lights were out. It's like, what are those? I'd never really seen them before. And my goodness gracious, we were on top of a mountain in the Laramie Range and they were turning blood red. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And the very first picture I took, that was 1990. Now, an old film camera, Pentax K1000 on a plastic Kmart tripod. Took two shots on slide film and got them back. And I thought, oh my gosh, this beautiful green thing swirling about. And from that moment, I was hooked. When I realized that you could preserve the auroras on film, I just experimented a ton. I, I'd had a, a heaping stack of of slides, the no good ones, the experiments gone wrong, you know, too dark, uh, fuzzy, out of focus, too light. I had this huge garbage can full of, of excess slide film, and that was just the learning curve. Well, when I go out here, um, it's all about getting the shot. And uh, we, my wife and I, we've called it the hero shot. But the hero shot is the one where you just come home and you go, look at this. And everyone goes, wow. And you're, you feel like a hero. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling. You know, it's always it's good for the ego, of course. It's good for the business. But if you have kind of strip that away, it's just, it's good for what's inside of you because that's really the hero moment in nature. And Mother Nature's putting on this show that is just mind-blowing. It's unbelievable. When I first resigned from my day job, that was in 1996, and decided I wanted to become a full-time aurora hunter, my goal from, from that moment and to this day still is to get one hero shot a year. I figured, and I'm talking the kind that you somebody wants to buy from you and hang on their wall, where the auroras are extremely bright, very active, turning colors, where you can't believe your eyes. If you get to preserve a little sample of that with a photograph, uh, well, it's what we call the hero shot. Wow, what a feeling. I mean, oh. You're just, you're, you're 
elevated, levitating, you are lifted up. Your spirits are so high that uh, I love that feeling. And I think I get that so much from seeing cool things in nature that I will go way out of my way to, to find that. And I can, you know, the next day, well, I'll be just laying there thinking about it and thinking how lucky I was or how fortunate. Uh, of course, I just, you know, spent two weeks sitting there staring at the sky and not seeing anything. So you got to remember that, you know, luck is kind of a relative term. But I still just feel incredibly lucky to be even in a position to where I could have been there, taken a photograph of it, and just mainly experienced it. Well, that, that feeling could last for days. Welcome back. Uh, strongest winds here, Northern Lynn Canal, north 30 knots, six foot seas. That drops down to about 24 Stevens Passage. Even lighter winds for Clarence Strait and really light winds here all along the southeast coast. Uh, small craft advisories on the south coast for those eight to 10 foot seas. And then for Sunday, still uh, light winds, pretty variable here from south to north. We've got northeast 10 to 15 for the south coast, seven to eight foot seas, and also south to southeast, 15 to 20 on the north side. And for the in, uh, inside waters, north to northwest, generally a northerly component throughout the entire area, but pretty light south of Northern Lynn Canal, still carrying small craft advisories through Sunday. For Prince William Sound, light northeast winds tomorrow. Same thing for Cook Inlet, north to northeast, only 10 knots, 15 knots for Kamishak Bay, light winds Shellacoff Strait, Northwest at about 15 here, Kodiak and the Barrens, and north to east winds from the North Gulf Coast with just four foot seas. Then big change on Sunday, uh, gales, Shellacoff Strait, northeast 35, 12 foot seas, and 30 knot northeast winds right up to the Forelands, and then dropping back to 20 knots, northern Cook Inlet. No change for Prince William Sound, small craft advisories, north Gulf Coast, east 25, eight foot seas and Prince William Sound, northeast 15 tomorrow. East to southeast here at 20 knots for the Alaska Peninsula, lighter winds in toward Kodiak Island. And for Sunday, northeast winds 30 knots here, Bristol Bay right on down the peninsula, north on the south side at 30 knots, and then gales from Sitkanak to Castle Cape, east 35 knots. And uh, western Aleutians, 25 knot winds out here from about Amchitka to yeah, two. And right in through here, uh, we've got gale warnings out and then kind of west to southwest, 30 knots, uh, 11 to 17 foot seas though here for the central Aleutians. And south to southeast, 25 for the uh, eastern Aleutians. And then on Sunday, west 30 knots, uh, turn northwest at 40 now here, west of Adak and right down on the uh, southern zone there, but small craft advisories on the north side of the islands. 25 knots turn northwest to 25 through here, and small craft advisories, north winds 25 to 30 for the Fox Islands. Seas uh, 11 to 12 feet, but up to 22 feet here uh, in that southern zone. And for the southwest coast tomorrow, light southeast winds, uh, actually starting out pretty light and variable, and then in the afternoon becoming southeast and picking up a little bit. East winds 20 for the Pribilofs, 15 knots, northern Bering Sea, east 15 for St. Lawrence Island. And for Sunday, northerly winds again, so uh, chillier air will come southward on riding in on those winds. Small crafts for the Pribilofs 20 knots, St. Matthew Island here to the north side of Nunavak Island. 30 knots out of the northeast there blowing out of Cuscombe Bay, but pretty light winds for St. Lawrence Island. Eastern Arctic coast, east winds 10 to 15 knots, and actually that's a good forecast all the way over to Cape Beaufort. And then uh, heavy freezing spray warning for the Chuck CC there with those easterlies at 20. Then those drop off, or actually they stay 20 knots there uh, on Sunday as well, northeast 15. Back to 20 knots here on the western coast, but uh, from uh, the central coast all the way over to demarcation point, east to northeast, really light, 5 to 10 knots. And for tonight again, fair over the interior, light winds, patchy areas of fog in the Arctic coast, maybe a flurry or two. 
Still a risk of some shower activity here north Gulf Coast, uh, western Prince William Sound, maybe the Kenai Peninsula. Looks like most of it will be offshore and fair for the northern panhandle. A few more clouds down to the south, but definitely dry. Dissipating front here keeps uh, areas of light snow from Bristol Bay, Togiak Bay, right up to St. Lawrence Island, but nothing significant. A little more uh, stronger system, more active weather pattern out here over the Aleutians, and we'll see everything heads eastward with one low center coming up near the Alaska Peninsula or just to the south. Not much in the way of wind, but a uh, chance of moisture. Same thing out here over the central Aleutians, more showery conditions with the main wind field to the south, except back here, colder air flowing in to the, uh, from the north there will bring some snow showers and gusty winds to the western Aleutians. Fair, light winds over the interior, and that symbol shouldn't be there. But a few flurries here along the southwest coast to Nome and possibly Teller. Otherwise, a nice day for the panhandle. And that holds through Sunday as well with high pressure here to the north. Offshore flow, this system not close enough yet to really affect the area. Uh, looking pretty good even off the coast. Not much of a wind increase until later on, Sunday night or Monday. But definitely for Kodiak Island, uh, 30, 35 knot winds with this, again with the gales in Chillicoff straight out of the northeast. So we're looking at some mixed precipitation here coming down to probably Falls Pass, back up to the north, really not reaching King Salmon, blocked by the Aleutian Range. So pretty fair skies out here, offshore flow, good VFR through this area right up the coast to Cape Lisbon. Then you get into some possible IFR areas of the Arctic coast due to probably fog, low clouds, but uh, fair over the interior. Chance of moisture now for the North Gulf Coast, but again, dry, lighter winds over the panhandle. Out to the west, colder air, snow showers, southern Bering Sea across the central Aleutians. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.